he's finally here. It's the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch Cobb Vamp Deluxe figure. Unbox and review. Hello and welcome back to QC Comics everyone. Today we've got a good one. I haven't received many Black Series orders recently. However, I got a call from my GameStop and Star Wars, the Mandalorian line of Cobb Vanth finally arrived. And I gotta say, <laughs> I was so excited to finally have this. You've got the beautiful Timothy Oliphant artwork on the side. And again, on the back there, along with Cobb Vance info, the Marshal of Muspelgo, a.k.a. Freetown now, baby. And uh, yeah, I've gone back and watched uh, the Marshal episode of this show, The Mandalorian anyway, uh, several times since it aired. It is a very cool addition to the Star Wars universe, that character anyway. And I gotta be honest, at first I hated the idea that somebody else was wearing Boba Fett's armor, but I almost wish we'd gotten more of them <laughs> with it. Like maybe he had a few episodes with it before he gave it up. And then of course, yeah, of course I'm happy it's, it went back to Boba Fett. I don't want to sound like, you know, like I'm not happy Boba Fett has his armor back. But Cobb Vanth was so cool. And, and this isn't like shaming to more Morrison's size or anything because he's not a big guy and I think fans were kind of wrong to you know make fun of him for looking bigger in the armor a lot of that came down to the Tuscan robes even still in the book of Boba Fett you see the behind the scenes and the guy is fit but he still looks a little bigger in the armor because he's worked that Tuscan garb into the armor it's part of his identity it's it's part of his his clan but I gotta say this guy looked like really slender and it gave me those return of the Jedi vibes seeing him in the armor. So I did think it was a very cool look. Of course, you've got a unique blaster rifle here with the taping on the barrel and the handle. And that just gives it a very kind of, you know, that, uh, the outskirts of Tatooine, not a super clean rifle. It's, it's taped up. It's got that grip for, you know, working in the sand and, and, you know, presumably you're sweating a lot out there in the desert. So you get that extra grip. I thought that was a really cool touch to the design of that blaster. I think more iconically though, you have his sidearm here. Of course, that is for his duels like he had with Cad Bane. And uh, yeah, I, I just, it's kind of a Western vibe character. So, you know, you got to have a pistol. That is very cool. I love that. That is definitely going to be on his hip at all times. Then you have the jetpack here. And this jetpack is unique in that the, obviously the rocket is different as, you know, Boba Fett and Cobb Vanth bought different rockets. I thought that was a nice touch that they included a different rocket atop here instead of you know, that green one that Boba Fett had. You know, they'd buy them from different places. They'd look different. And that does come off as well if you want to do some photography, you know, post-firing the rocket. The uh, thrusters here do swivel. And overall, super clean paint job. The wear and tear looks fantastic. Oh, <laughs> Note to self, don't hold it by that. But yeah, this looks great. I, I really love the look of this jetpack. The paint applications are all top notch. Let's see if we got a Return of the Jedi Boba Fett scrunched helmet <laughs> like, like we did. Um, yeah, a little bit. And that's just the fault of, of it being packed in like this. It's just a little too tight. If yours comes across like this, it's really no big deal. You can kind of squeeze it out. And that should do the trick. And if it doesn't, you just apply a little warm water. Not necessarily something you should have to do, but it happens in packaging. Of course, the rangefinder will go down there. You can pop that up. And the armor looked already, you know, with a lot of wear and tear in Return of the Jedi. But you have that post-Sarlacc melting of the paint there. That looks very cool. 
I do love Boba Fett's re-armored painted version of the outfit, but this fits so well in a Western style episode. We'll start at the top here with the Timothy Oliphant face scan, or at least I think they use the face scan on him. Anyway, it looks great. I think the beard looks maybe a little too bushy. I don't know. Some, something about the face looks a little different than Timothy Oliphant. I think for a Black Series figure, it looks great. I think it, it looks as good as any sculpt, but it just, it's a little different than Timothy Oliphant. The hair's right. The beard's maybe a little thick, but anyway, nitpicky stuff. I think it's a great face sculpt. You, of course, have the shoulder armor there with the Mythosaur logo. Some more damage paint on this. And I'm going to have to kind of start speeding up and going a little more quickly here because otherwise this video is going to just take forever. Hopefully you can see all the details here as I go through the figure. Into the knee armor there. Yeah, this guy looks great. The gauntlets, the gauntlets look fantastic. They almost look like a little big kind of bulky on him. But something about the slender design of the character, and I love the way he kind of, like, he has that gunslinger look to him. God, what a great figure. And, uh, yeah, he's going to move and articulate, like I think most Black Series figures. You can kind of tell by the, the joints and things. Knees will go back about that far. He'll kick out pretty far. He's got uh, a little bit of torso articulation. Of course, the head's going to go whichever way you want. And uh, yeah, he's got one hand to hold the barrel of the blaster. He's got one trigger finger. Of course, he draws with his right hand. So one trigger hand is all he needs. And now uh, let's check out the feet. Yep, and they move just like they should right out of the box. Yeah, I'm uh, very excited to pose this guy up. We're going to pose him up, give our final thoughts and grade, because I want to get this guy on the shelf ASAP. Okay, so there we've got Cobb Vanth, a.k.a. the Marshal of Most Pelgo, a.k.a. Freetown, posed up, ready to go. What do we think? Well, if you couldn't tell by the way I was talking about the figure, I'm very happy with it. I think from head to toe, it looks great. It moves great. It's designed exactly the way it should to the character. The slenderness of it, like I mentioned, is just so different from Tamora Morrison's Boba Fett. I think Tamora Morrison's got kind of like a imposing kind of a physical body type where you, you know, and it, that goes really well with the gaffy stick and just kind of the character he's evolved into. I think that really lends well to the type of, he's almost kind of like a brute. Whereas the slenderness of Timothy Oliphant and the way the armor, you know, the clothes underneath are you so slender, the clothes are a little bit baggy. And he's just got this stature that, you know, if you've ever seen the show Justified, you know what I'm talking about. He just embodies that gunslinger kind of character. So you slap this Mandalorian armor on him and it looks great. It's very unique. Something I haven't seen with a, a character wearing Mandalorian armor before. So I am very, very happy with it. This is a definite 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, there's no way around it. It's a top-notch figure. I would recommend it for anyone's collection. Whether you're a Boba Fett fan or not, whether you like the Mandalorian, I think it's a great Star Wars character to have on your shelf. Um, the price I paid for it, I believe, was $27.99. It's considered a deluxe figure. Listen, for, for that price, for it being deluxe, as they call it, I think it's worth the retail. Especially since most Black Series figures you come across are $25 now anyway. So it's only an extra $3. Although, really, when you're thinking about it, what more did you get out of this that would normally come with the figure? When I think of a deluxe figure, I'm thinking of it's the regular figure. It comes with the blaster, you know, the things that that figure needs. And then they've added some other stuff, some blast effects, some flames, some anything. This is just everything that the character should have. If they had added some flame effects like from the other Boba Fett has or, you know, some flames for the wrist gauntlet, something to consider a deluxe. I'd be like, okay, that's a deluxe figure. To me, this is just the figure. <laughs> it's not anything that should deem it uh, deluxe. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I do think it's worth the retail price. 
However, I have shifted uh, into collecting the retro line and more TVC because Black Series is up to 25 bucks and it's for two figures, but you're paying over 50 bucks. It's, it's just a lot. Um, and, and so I've really slowed my Black Series collecting, but this was one that was on pre-order that I knew was a absolute must have. I'm a huge Boba Fett fan. I loved Cobb Vanth. So I needed this figure for my collection. Anyway, before I ramble too much, do you have Cobb Vanth? What do you think about it? Is it worth the price? Do you think it's not worth it? Is Black Series becoming too expensive for you? Or are you pressing on and hoping those prices come down? Or have you just gotten used to paying it and uh, it's just, it is what it is now. Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll have more videos coming later in the week. Take care. We'll see you next time.